After driving through West Texas and up into Colorado, we arrived about an hour north of Denver along what's called Colorado's Front Range. Now, the Front Range is interesting because the water for the Rocky Mountains is typically on the left or west side, but a majority of Co Colorado's population is on the right or east side of the mountain. And this is where the Chimney Hollow Reservoir Project with Barnard Construction and Northern Water comes into play. This is the biggest new dam built in the United States in the past 20 years and will eventually stand 350 feet tall. Now this isn't, it's important to note, this is not stopping an existing river. It's merely building a wall across a valley that will form a bathtub, a reservoir to fill with water and release over time. So with that, Let's go check out what it takes to build a dam of this size. This is some of the infrastructure required for the dam. So the dam is the main act of the show here, but there's a lot of infrastructure required to make sure that functions as it should. This is one of those pieces. This is the spillway. Did you say it's 2,300 feet? So the whole spillway is 3,600 feet. 3,600 feet. So this is a 3,600-foot long structure, eventually when it's completed, going from the very top of the dam to the very bottom, in theory. And this is really just for the sake of emergency. If the dam were to overfill, you don't want the water going over the dam because that could lead to a catastrophic failure. So instead, it goes into this spillway, which takes it out and away from that dam. So this is the finished box culvert I'm standing in. Right behind me is the next 25 foot section. This is the formwork they're using. So the formwork now is set. They're preparing the outside forms as we speak for the next pour. Once that's done, this form essentially shrinks and then they slide it to the next section, which then leaves this beautiful concrete box in its place. This right here is the valve house. This is essentially the brain behind this operation once it's complete. Typically a dam, you dam up a river and then the river backs up behind that. That's not what's happening here. They're damming up this valley, but there's no running water through this valley. The water for the reservoir is gonna come from those pipes all the way up there, those penstocks that are coming from other water storage further into the mountains. They're tying into that. There's a pipeline that comes down to this valve house, and this valve house then directs that water to where it needs to go. So they can either from here pump the water through a tunnel up to the top of the reservoir to fill the reservoir, the Chimney Hollow Reservoir, or they can pump it to another valve house, which pumps it over to the reservoir just on the other side of this little hill here. So this controls all of the water for the operation. This is all about water storage, water management. You can't do it without this valve house. This is where all of the water for this entire operation will come from. This ties into the penstock above where we were just looking at. It will come into this valve house and then from the valve house go through the tunnel and to the top of the dam or to the top of the reservoir where it'll feed the reservoir. The reservoir when it's full, will contain about 90,000 acre feet of water. To put that into perspective, imagine an acre full of one foot of water times 90,000. That's how much water is gonna be in here. I don't know how many households that is, but it's a lot of households. It's a very important project. And this is where all the water comes from, valve house into the reservoir. This is the very center of the dam. This is the asphalt core. In every dam, you need an impermeable layer in the middle of the dam to prevent 
seepage to prevent water from going through the dam, which is the point of the dam. There's not enough clay in this area to create an impermeable center core with that material. That's the typical material used. So they've brought in Wallow, which is a Swiss company. We've shot with them in Zurich on the runway project. Put that footage in real quick. And they're here all the way from Europe to place this asphalt core. So all the way down the middle of this dam, all the way up to the top of the dam will be this small asphalt layer. So it's just this wall of asphalt surrounded by rock to create that impermeable layer. They're hand placing here because of the grade. This is one of the only places they'll be doing the hand placing. They have a specialized machine, one of two in the world, that places the most of the asphalt. They place it in nine inch lifts, and the dam is over 300 feet tall, so they do lift after lift after lift all the way up to, I guess the core goes all the way to the top. The core goes to the top. Here's the asphalt core. Then you have your material placement from here. So you have your small material just a few feet from the asphalt core. Then it gets a little bit bigger and then it gets a lot bigger. And on the outside will be riprap. All of this material is quarried on site just up the way. That quarry eventually will be underwater, but right now as it's operating, it's technically the largest quarry, I believe in the state of Colorado, entirely temporarily to produce all of the material necessary for the dam. So 16 and a half million cubic yards of rock is being quarried just up the hill there. We'll go there in a moment to build this dam. at the very top of one of the sides of the future dam. This is where that spillway, that box culvert we were in earlier this morning, this is where it'll tie into if, if the water gets so high that they need to discharge the water further down. But this is essentially going to be the elevation of the water that'll be behind the structure in the reservoir. One other thing to note, right over there is Wallow's batch plant, and there's a concrete batch plant down there. And there's the quarry over there that we're about to go to. All material needed on site is made on site. So the asphalt, the concrete, and the aggregate is all made here to cut costs and to prevent truck traffic from going in and out of the neighborhoods outside of this project. Nine nine two K loader. We have three three ninety fives loading trucks, and then we are going to go walk down to the sixty fifteen, the big boy. All of the material that the sixty fifteen is loading into that triple seven is being hauled directly to the dam. That's why we saw that excavator with the hammer over there taking care of the oversize. All of this material meets spec for a bulk 
of the dam. It doesn't need to go to that crushing operation. So it's hauled directly there, making it very, very efficient. Tunnel time, we just tagged in. I am uh, 131. You put one on the board saying 131 is in there and you take one with you, you put it back when you're done. This is the tunnel that will carry the water from the valve house like I talked about earlier this morning through the mountain and up to the top of the reservoir to fill the reservoir. So we're gonna go in there and check out the tunneling. It's probably gonna be loud. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing much talking. excavated by drilling and blasting. Then they put this shot crate finish to it and that right there is the final form work. They're gonna put two feet of concrete around the entirety of the tunnel for the finished product. And then there'll be a floor slab, which is where your piping and access will be to some valves that then go from here. This is 800 feet long. Then from here it goes to a smaller tunnel, which then leads to the very top of the reservoir. What did you think of the tunnel? That was cool. 